Charles Purcell presents Are you concerned about drug use in your family or perhaps your own drug use? The average American takes seven prescription medications per day on top of a myriad of over-the-counter drugs for everything from the common headache to memory enhancement, restless leg syndrome, insomnia, hair loss, memory enhancement, you name it. And that's not to mention the many popular recreational drugs, from alcohol, nicotine, and cannabis, all the way to heroin, cocaine, meth, and a variety of illicit pills. Well, we here at Big Pharma would like you to add one more pill to your daily regimen. You heard me right, one more pill, and that's Top It Off. Top It Off is a highly addictive, once daily time-released capsule that takes the edge off your drug diet. Whether you're on a couple of medications per day or you're a full-on junkie, Top It Off is for you. You could spend years of your life and tens of thousands of dollars in rehab trying to kick your habit. Or you could ask your doctor about Top It Off. Top It Off works with the other drugs in your system to say, Hey man, chill. It's all cool. So stop fighting your inner demons and chemical imbalances today. Ask your doctor about Top It Off right now. Seriously, call right now. Don't worry, if you have trouble affording your prescription of Top It Off, Big Pharma can help reduce or even eliminate any cost to you. At least for the first taste. Top It Off with Top It Off. softening of the brain. When you eat 
banana fritters, every undertaker titters, and the casket makers nearly go insane. Some little bug is going to find you someday. Some little bug will sneak behind you someday. Eating juicy white pineapple makes the sexton dust the chapel. Some little bug is going to find you someday. Some little bug is going to find you someday. Some little bug will sneak behind you someday. Eat some sauce, they call it chili. On your breast, they'll place a lily. Some little bug is going to find you someday. Hi, I'm Jeremy, and my life is precious. I just turned nine years old, and I'm fighting for just one more day. This is seven-year-old Elijah. He has no arms or legs, but still loves roughhousing with his dog, Bucky. Here's Abigail. She's only four. Her spine isn't right. We're not asking for much, just a chance. What can you do? Become a member today of Really Sick Kids. Monthly memberships begin at just $15. That's less than 50 cents a day. Really Sick Kids provides help to really sick kids and their families. And with your monetary gift, we'll provide you with an adorable Really Sick Kids blanket. Thank you. Imagine a world without elephants. These beautiful kings and queens of the jungle are being brought to extinction by poachers and profiteers. Your contribution of just $19 a month to Elephant Rescue, that's only 60 cents a day, will help to rescue these majestic creatures for generations to come. For each $19 monthly pledge to symbolically adopt a baby elephant, we'll send a thank you gift of this adorable baby elephant plush toy. Call or click today and thank you. Elephant rescue numbers just don't add up. They said $19 a month comes to only 60 cents a day. Well, that's just a bunch of elephant poop. How did they do it? They divided 19 a month by 31 days when everybody knows there are four months a year with only 30 days. Not to mention February, which has only 28. Even by their own self-serving calculations, it's over 61 cents a day. And when you factor in the correct day to month ratio, it's a whopping 62 and a half cents. Elephant Rescue played fast and loose with the math and played you for a fool. Paid for by really sick kids. Every day in Russia is a living hell for elderly Jewish folks. So old and so frail, and already having suffered the pains of war, now, as they should be enjoying their golden years, maybe in Florida or someplace nice, instead they live on a steady diet of bupkis. We here at Christians for Jews pray that you will join us to brighten the lives of these cherished elders. You might wonder, why are Christians so concerned about Jews? We have our reasons. Won't you commit your tithe today of just $27 a month? That's less than 89 cents a day. We did the math, trust us. As our thanks, we'll send you this delightful Christians for Jews one size fits all t-shirt to wear proudly. God bless you. Christians for Jews doesn't care about Christians. What? They want you to send money to Jews when there are plenty of Christians suffering too. What? 
Why? Because of some screwed up pseudo religious bonk about Israel and end times prophecy. I'm sorry, what? They're nothing but a bunch of radical right wing zealots who would gladly send your Christian grandparents off a cliff to appease their mythical sky god. And what about Muslims or Hindus or atheists? Christians for Jews don't care about them, and they don't care about you. For that matter, they don't even care about Jews. They just care about saving their own asses for the afterlife, while everybody else can go to hell. I'm sorry, what? Paid for by Elephant Rescue. Thousands of wounded war heroes sacrificed their bodies and their lives to save your freedom. Let's face it. Without their brave service on the battlefield, you'd probably be dead. Or at the very least, you'd be talking Russian and eating borscht right now. Or Farsi and falafels. Or Vietnamese and some damn noodle soup. But now these courageous warriors need you to step up and be a hero for them. Physical and invisible wounds of war are the price they paid. And your price to say thank you? Just $29 a month for your membership in Wounded War Heroes. That's only 95 cents a day. And with each new paid membership, Wounded War Heroes will send you, as our thank you gift, this beautiful replica AR-15 to display in your home or to scare off intruders. <gasps> we at Christians for Jews love guns and war as much as anybody. And we love the men and women who fight in wars. But wounded war heroes resorts to offensive stereotypes in their latest pitch for your hard-earned disposable income. All Russians don't eat borscht. I have a Russian aunt on my husband's side, and she hates borscht. Farsi and falafels? Insulting an entire culture? Not to mention insulting you with a cute manipulative attempt at alliteration. And listen to this. Or Vietnamese in some damn noodle soup. Cursing? Really wounded war heroes? They'll stoop to anything. They are ungodly, unfit, and certainly unworthy of your support. Paid for by Christians for Jews. So-called Christians for Jews don't like the so-called cursing in our latest request for funds. Well, listen up, Christians for Jews. You can shove your sanctimonious, self-righteous sermonizing right where the sun don't shine. How do you like that for alliteration? To all the good people listening out there, I know you care about a lot of issues. And there's a lot of suffering in the world, and you've only got so much money you can give to charities. So you have to decide. Are you seriously going to choose those holy roller wackos over wounded war heroes? I mean seriously, it's not even close. Or elephants? Elephants? Seriously? Elephants? I mean for God's sakes. Elephant Rescue is a damn good charity and wounded war heroes shouldn't be telling people not to contribute to us. How else are elephants going to be saved? The government? Do you have any idea how low elephants are on the list of priorities? Speaking of the government, why the hell do we even need a charity like Wounded War Heroes? Shouldn't the politicians who send these kids off to war take care of them when they come back? I mean, isn't that the duty of every American to pay a couple of bucks more in taxes, maybe? To see that veterans' needs are met? How is a charity like Wounded War Heroes even a thing? Same goes for really sick kids. I mean, if you had universal health care, like literally every other civilized nation on Earth, a group like really sick kids wouldn't have to be hawking cheap threadbare blankets so little Sally can get a prosthetic. I mean, it's crazy. Hey, mister, we at really sick kids are just here to help. Sure, the United States should have universal health care, but we don't because democracy in America is freaking dead. Watch your language. Shut up, Christians for Jews. Democracy is not dead. Democracy is alive and well right here in the greatest country on earth because of wounded war here. Democracy is dead as a doornail because the interest of corporate profits rules everything and this nation's lawmakers have their globes in a vice by the owner class. The very people that wars are fought for. 
You're the problem, wounded war heroes. My God, blasphemer. Now, I think the wheelchair kid makes a pretty good point, actually. So how about this? Don't give your charitable donations to really sick kids or to wounded war heroes, and then both charities run dry. That would force the American government to own up to its responsibility, to take care of veterans, and for universal health care. Yeah, that may work in theory, but not in real life. And even if it did, in the meantime, you got a lot of sick kids and vets with no help at all. Can't we do both? Support sick kids and wounded vets while also fighting for democracy and justice? I don't know. It just seems counterproductive to keep supporting charities for issues that the government ought to take care of. Except yours, of course. Well, yes! We elephants are already getting our asses kicked by the seals and the dolphins. And don't even get me started on those damn little dogs and cats. Oh my god, the cats and the dogs. They're killing us too. My goodness, yes. Imagine giving money to dogs and cats. They don't even have souls. Wouldn't I love to have just a little bit of that dog and cat money? Wouldn't we all? And the cancer cartel. How are we to compete? Susan G. Komen can bite me. Pinkwasher? That's what she is, pinkwasher. Hey, man. Cancer's got a f***ing PR budget like you wouldn't believe. Language! And those runaway homeless teenagers. Oh, they're the worst. That woman who sings Amazing Grace, she's not even on pitch. And those kids shivering in bus stops. They're so obviously actors. Well, you can't expect them to film actual homeless kids. Why not? We use real veterans. Yeah, us kids are real. No, I agree with the church lady on this one. Using real victims is exploitation. Hey, wait a minute. You use real old Jews. Well, yes, but that's different. How is it different? But, well, you film real dead elephants. But that's not people. So you admit it. People are more important than animals. I didn't say that. You kind of did, though, elephant man. F*** you, kid. Language! Hey, hey, we're getting off topic here. All I know is you guys are cutting into my revenues. Your revenues? We're entitled to our share. And how are my dried apple doll grandmas supposed to compete with a bunch of adorable amputees? Hey, those are the brakes, lady. Come on, you guys. Cease fire. Let's stop all this fighting. There's plenty of money out there for all of us. Cowboy G.I. Joe is right. We're all making money. I suppose none of us are in any real danger of going out of business. Sure. The world's always going to have unsolvable problems, right? Well, yes. It's not like any of us are ever going to actually solve one. We've got the perfect business model. Hey, soldier. You weren't stationed at Camp Lejeune by any chance, were you? What? No. Why? Just checking. I've got a thing on the side. God bless us, everyone.
I sure am enjoying this product that is now a major part of my identity. Me too. Did you hear the cool new catchphrase yet? Oh yes, I'm using it all the time, and so are all of my friends. <laughs> and the website is so fresh. I know, right? It's my new homepage. Barf dirt. Poop barf dirt. Poop barf dirt. Rhyme, rhythm, and repetition. Poop barf dirt. You took me out for a Rhyme, walk. Rhyme, rhythm, and repetition. Rhyme, I rhythm, really and repetition. needed that walk. Rhyme, rhythm, and repetition. You knew it. Yes, you did. Rhyme, rhythm, and repetition. We Rained our heads and did gawk at everything on the block. Barf rhythm and dirt. Yes, we did. Rhyme, rhyme, rhythm and racing, 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 all day, 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 all day. My thoughts, my thoughts, my thoughts, my thoughts, my thoughts, my thoughts are now called rhyme, rhythm and repetition. Poop, rhyme, barf, repetition. Dirt. Dirt. It's now done. Dirt. Poop. No. Poop. Woke me up like a bird. Dirt. Taught me how to eat worms. Poop. Barf. Dirt. Now I'm full. Rhyme, rhythm, and repetition. 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 I'm so full of poop barf dirt. I could just burst a poop barf dirt. Rhyme, rhythm, and repetition. I think I'll take a nap first. Rhyme, rhythm, and repetition. I'm so full. A poop barf dirt. Poop barf dirt. Sullivan knew he would regret going out tonight. He was already dreading it. But his friends, who called him Eddie, first it was Ed for Ed Sullivan, and it soon morphed into Eddie. His given name is Chester. Well, his friends had him convinced that tonight would be the night they would find some action. Even though he didn't really want to go out at all, he was ready early and getting anxious when James... They called him Jesse for Jesse James. And Cody, they called him Bill for Buffalo Bill Cody. Well, his friends were late arriving to pick him up in Cody's new used car. Eddie always got anxious when people were late, which they always were. It was bad enough waiting for friends that are 20 minutes late, but Sullivan was always ready 20 minutes early, at least. Because the only thing that made Eddie more anxious than friends arriving late was he himself running late. Everybody has the anxiety dream where they are terribly late for an important work meeting or a class at school, or they're late catching a train or a plane, and the whole dream is a series of problems and stresses. Well, Chester Eddie Sullivan had this anxiety dream like everybody else. But he had it more frequently. 
And worse, he had it while he was awake. He lived it. If he had an appointment in the evening after dinner, he would, the day before, mind you, start doing the backward time math. Okay, they're picking me up at 8, so I better start getting dressed at 7. So shower at 6.30, eat at 5.30, prep the meal at 4.30, home by 4 at the latest, leaving work by 3 at the latest, so there's time to stop at the jeweler's and pick up the watch that's being repaired. He wanted to wear it that night. He thought it would give him class. On second thought, the jeweler might be occupied with other customers, so he might have to wait a bit. Better leave work at 2.30 just to be safe. He was lucky. He could come and go at work, lots of autonomy, but he was also conscientious. So he figured if he was going to leave at 2.30, he'd better come in extra early that morning, say 6.30. He could work through lunch and eat at his desk, just buy a sandwich, chips, and a drink at the vending machines during his morning break. Okay, at work by 6.30, which means catching the 6.05 trolley, which means leaving the house by 5.45, maybe 5.40 to be safe. So that means breakfast at 5.15, so shower at 4.45 at the latest. Okay, set the alarm for 4.30. That ought to be safe. Eh, Better make it 4.25. Man, that's pretty early. Better be sure to get to sleep early the night before. So he did the whole day's backward time math on that so he'd be sure to be tired enough, early enough, to get to sleep. The stress of knowing he had to get up early would make it hard to get to sleep the night before. Better arrange the whole day to work against that. The plan for tonight? Go out with the guys, and at some point in the evening, meet the woman of his dreams, then ditch Jesse and Cody, drive home in the woman's car, make love all night, and be together forever. It could happen. Jesse and Bill drove up and honked their horn. They were early. It was only 8.17. This episode of Charles Burcell Presents is available right now wherever you find your podcasts. Or go to the website charlesbursell.com for the full archive and all the other series in the podcast family. Follow, comment, and contact me on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks to our flagship station, Riverwest Radio, riverwestradio.com. Theme music composed and performed by Peter Donalds. From the New Arts and Media Studios in Milwaukee, I'm Charles Bursell.